It's Thursday, July 14th, and this is your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Kate Chaplinski, and since it's Thursday, later on we have a preview of our community newspapers this week. Frank Granito will join us for a Nutmeg Sports update and with a look at the forecast, and we'll also take a look back on this day in history. But first, we have the latest local headlines, including that a New York man reportedly threatened to kill a Walmart loss prevention officer with a knife after trying to steal two bottles of orange juice from the Milford store. Police said that on July 12th at about 2 in the afternoon, they received a complaint of a robbery at Walmart on the Boston Post Road. L.B. Espinal, 27 years old of Brooklyn, New York, had grabbed two bottles of orange juice and left the store without paying for them. Espinal was approached by a Walmart loss prevention officer and asked to return to the store. Instead, he dropped the bottles and ran into the parking lot where he was once again asked to return to the store. Espinal then pulled a knife and pointed it at that loss prevention officer, stating, I'll kill you. Espinal then ran north onto the Boston Post Road. A perimeter was set up in the area and police dogs helped locate him. He was hiding in the rear yard of a home on Cedarhurst Lane. And in other news, a man was arrested in connection with a bank robbery Wednesday, had pled guilty to at least five other bank robberies in western Connecticut between 1998 and 2005. The Connecticut Post says that 46-year-old Scott Taylor of Weathersfield was arrested following a robbery in Stratford at the Chase Bank on Main Street. Lieutenant Frank Iannotti said that Taylor entered the bank, indicated that he was armed, and demanded money. He then fled the scene with about $1,000 in cash. Officers immediately began to search the area, and Taylor was located at the Stratford train station where he was taken into custody. The money was recovered, and there was no weapon found. The train station is less than a half mile from the Chase Bank. Police said arrest charges are pending. And Connecticut State Police have arrested a local television meteorologist on child porn charges. Police said that 33-year-old Justin Goldstein of Hamden was arrested at his place of work, WTNH in New Haven, on Wednesday. He has been charged with first-degree possession of child pornography and promoting a minor in an obscene performance. The investigation began in June when videos of suspected child pornography were downloaded from an account that was assigned to Goldstein. Investigators went to Goldstein's home on Aspen Glen Drive in Hamden Wednesday to execute a search warrant, and police said they seized various computer equipment and found files of suspected child porn at the scene. Goldstein was released on a $200,000 bond and is expected to appear in court in Meriden on July 26th. And state troopers in Groton arrested two Rhode Island men after seizing nearly $3 million worth of cocaine following a motor vehicle stop on I-95 northbound. While state DOT workers were mowing off the highway, troopers stopped two vehicles that they said were weaving in and out of traffic. The first vehicle, a 2012 Nissan Maxima with Rhode Island registration plates, was being operated by 33-year-old Arnulfo Hisiano. The second vehicle, a 2014 black Dodge Ram truck with Rhode Island registration plate, was being operated by 31-year-old Giovanni Carmona. When troopers suspected drugs might be present, Hisiano allowed troopers to search the Nissan with a canine. The police dog detected narcotics in two cardboard boxes located in the trunk of the vehicle. Hisiano told troopers that the boxes were not his, and he allowed them to open those boxes. Upon opening those boxes, troopers found 29 kilograms of cocaine individually packaged inside the two boxes. The cocaine carries a street value of about $2.9 million. Hisiano told police he was traveling with the driver of the second car, Giovanni Carmona, who was operating the Dodge Ram and was also stopped in the vehicle enforcement area. They were both taken into custody and processed on numerous drug charges. And a Bridgeport man is facing a pair of weapons charges after his arrest by Stratford police. Jahan Potts, 21 years old, was charged June 27th with carrying a handgun without a permit and illegal transfer of a firearm, both felonies. Police said that Potts' arrest is part of an ongoing investigation into a drive-by shooting that happened back in March. Police said Potts is an associate of the victim of the shooting, and police officers saw Potts walking on Larkin Court and stopped him to talk with him. Police said one of the officers saw a handgun partially sticking out of his pocket. The weapon was seized and Potts was arrested. 
He was ordered held on a $50,000 bond. According to state court records, he's scheduled to appear in Bridgeport Superior Court on August 20th. And in other news, a retired police officer commits suicide in Bethel Tuesday night outside a condominium complex where he lived. Police said that Lieutenant Kevin Kennedy, who retired last year, shot himself after authorities were called to the Plumtree Heights condo complex around 9 at night. Kennedy was brought to Danbury Hospital where he was pronounced dead. The Danbury News Times reports that his friends and town officials expressed shock at the loss. Police were called to the complex by Kennedy's family, and after a brief dialogue, police said Kennedy turned the gun on himself. And in other news today, it's the end of an era in New Canaan. Home builder Andy Glazer confirmed to the New Canaan Advertiser in an interview July 13th that contracts have been signed for him to purchase the Roger Sherman Inn from Joseph Jaffrey and Ness Jaffrey for around $5 million. Glazer has a plan to build eight houses on the 1.8 acre site. Glazer explained that the Roger Sherman Inn on Owen Oak Ridge Road would likely remain operational until the end of the year. He expects to take ownership in January and assuming the new Canaan Planning and Zoning Commission approves that his building plan begin the conversion to housing next spring. Glazer said we have no formal approval from planning and zoning but are developing a thorough review. He said we want to build a village with small houses focused on empty nesters. Those houses, each close to about 2,600 square feet and priced around $2 million, he said will be very traditional two and a half story colonials. But you can get more on that story at ncadvertiser.com. Switching gears now, throwing it over to Frank Granito for a look at the forecast. Frank. Thanks, Kate. It's cloudy out right now and the temperature is sitting just around 79 degrees. The expected high for today is up at 85 with a low of 70 tonight and the humidity is way up compared to yesterday. It's currently at 87 percent. There are chances of rain throughout the day and expect some thunderstorms later on this afternoon and into the early evening. As we look towards the weekend though, it'll be partly cloudy tomorrow, clearing up in the afternoon a high of 92, again going to be very humid, but Saturday looks like it's going to be absolutely beautiful. Barely any clouds in the sky, a high of 88 with a very low humidity. That's going to do it for weather. Let's throw it back to Kate. All right, good to hear that humidity will be going down, Frank. We are going to step out for a break, and when we come back, we're going to take a look back on this day in history. Frank has a Nutmeg Sports update, and we have some more news coming up after this. Have a sports injury or a slip and fall that needs immediate care? Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist fast, without an appointment. Biking, golf, tennis, soccer, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care, open Monday through Saturday, now in two locations. The I Park Building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk and 36 Old Kings Highway South in Darien. Or go to CoastalOrthoExpress.com, like them on Facebook. Keep your future star active and happy this summer at Future Star Sports Academy camps and clinics. The Academy is offering sessions throughout Fairfield County. Sign up for a week of basketball, cheerleading, football, or a multi-sports camp. At Future Stars Academy, children learn the fundamentals while under the supervision of qualified coaches. And what sets the Academy apart is its special Lessons of Life sessions, teaching values and focusing on building self-esteem, friendships, and honesty. Located at Sports Center Connecticut in Shelton and in Sports and Trumbull. Register online at futurestarsportsacademy.com. You're watching the HAN Network, and you're not alone. Nearly one million people have watched our live sports, news, and entertainment programming since the network launched in August 2015. Advertise on the network that reaches Fairfield County, Connecticut's most engaged audience. Contact Advertising Director Jessica Murren at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network.
We're back on this July 14th edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network, filling in this week for Donald Ang with a look back on this day in history. And first, 1798, the Sedition Act becomes law in the United States. In direct violation of the Constitution's guarantee of freedom of speech, the Sedition Act permitted the prosecution of individuals who voiced or printed what the government deemed to be malicious remarks about the president or government of the U.S. Fourteen Republicans, mainly journalists, were prosecuted and some imprisoned under the act. The act was denounced by Democratic Republicans and ultimately helped them to victory in the 1800 election when Thomas Jefferson defeated the incumbent President Adams. The act was allowed to expire in 1800. 1881, Billy the Kid is shot and killed by Pat Garrett outside Fort Sumner. Billy is known to have killed at least eight men, including Sheriff William Brady and three deputies. His death at age 21 sealed his legacy as one of the most famous outlaws of the American West. 1889, Alexander Mackenzie finally completes his two-year journey to the mouth of the river he hoped would take him to the Pacific, but which turns out to flow into the Arctic Ocean. Mackenzie named the river uh, the River of Disappointment, but it was later named after him. The Mackenzie is the second longest river system in North America. Only the Mississippi is larger, and it is entirely located within Canada. And finally, in 1789, there was this. In one revolutionary stand of defiance, the National Assembly is born. It will be a communion of voices from around the country, a parliamentary body enacting the people's will. But wresting power from the king would not be so easy as signing a simple proclamation. All of these early victories that take place at Versailles are large. Well, so what you're supposed to be seeing was that uh, in 1789, French Revolution, citizens of Paris stormed the Bastille. The medieval fortress was a symbol of royal authority in Paris. A mob of about 1,000 overpowered the garrison of 82 invalid soldiers, no longer fit for full service. One soldier and 90 attackers died in the fighting, though the mob later killed another 12 defenders. When Louis XVI learned of the event the following day, he is reputed to have asked a Duke La Roche of called if this signalized the citizens were in revolt. The Duke replied, no, sire, it's a revolution. But that does it for your look back on this day in history. Now time to throw it back over to Frank Granito for a Nutmeg Sports Update. Frank. Thank you, Kate. The Team Connecticut 18 and under softball team fell into the loser's bracket at the Colorado Firecracker Tournament in Aurora, Colorado. After losing 11-6 to the Adidas-sponsored Southern California Breakers, excuse me, Team Connecticut went down to loser's bracket. They then took down the Nebraska Zephyrs 5-1, as well as Team TFS-STX from Texas 6-3 in the largest college softball showcase event in the nation. Team Connecticut is currently 6-3. Several local boys were part of the Team 91 Tri-State 2021 lacrosse team, which just won the Westchester War Games in Purchase, New York. After going 4-0-1 during the qualification round, Team 91 went on to win the championship 5-4 on a late goal scored by Newtown's Patrick Garrity. And finally, don't forget that tonight, the semifinals for the Connecticut 13 and under Babe Ruth State Tournament begin at Stanford's Cubetta Stadium. Pitch one for, first, for the first game is scheduled for 5.30 between the American League winner Waterford and National League runner-up Darianne. Game two is set to start at 8 o'clock featuring the National League winner New Milford against American League runner-up and host town Stanford Thunder, which will start at 8 o'clock. The HA Network will be broadcasting both of these games live as well as the championship game tomorrow at 7 o'clock. And if you find yourself in the stands down there, it is National Hot Dog Day, so come grab a Frank with Frank. I'm looking forward to it. Kate, let's That's throw it right. back to you. I meant to mention it was National Hot Dog Day. Frank's with Frank, and we're hoping that the weather holds out, obviously, but we'll keep folks updated on Twitter, of course. Let you know what's going on. Frank, thank you so much. Of course, thank you. All right, getting back to a little more news today. On Tuesday night, the West Reading Fire Chief, Glenn Johnson, derided a Reading police plan to install temporary stop signs at the intersection of Umpawag and Marchant Roads, telling the Planning Commission he believes the plan is more permanent than temporary. He added that he was surprised to learn about the plan from a member of the public as the idea had not been mentioned at last Wednesday's meeting of the Reading Fire and Police Chiefs. 
He said, we're only four weeks away from bridge construction ending, and we all knew this would be uncomfortable, but some things aren't necessarily temporary around here. The stop signs, according to a police press release issued Monday, are temporary, but will be evaluated after the project is complete to determine if they will remain. And according to the New Canaan Advertiser, seven-year-old Carrie Wang, a first grader at West Elementary School and the son of New Canaan's Ariel and John Ling, has won several statewide, national, and international piano competitions. He was invited to perform in Carnegie Hall three times in the last six months, the latest being May 15th as the first place winner of the Little Mozart competition. In June, he was honored by the National Piano Guild for his performance of the 14th Sonatina Movements by memory. He won the special gold Sonatina medal plaque with the top grade of Superior Plus. And Trumbull High School graduate Tony Horton, the creator of the home exercise regime P90X, will be receiving the Jack LaLanne Award today at the 2016 IDEA World Convention in Los Angeles. The Trumbull Times spoke to Horton this week and he said, I grew up with Jack LaLanne and he called him an iconic figure. Horton's 22-minute hardcore is the latest in a long line of exercise videos that Horton has started, beginning with the original P90X in 2001. He will present it at the convention this week in front of thousands of fitness professionals in attendance for more than 60 countries. But you can get more on that story at TrumbullTimes.com. And as Frank mentioned earlier, it's going to be a hot weekend, but a great one for sidewalk sales. And if you head to Darien and New Canaan sidewalk sales this weekend, you can say hi to us. New Canaan sidewalk sales will start a day earlier this year with local stores putting merchandise out in front of their stores tomorrow, Friday, July 15th, during regular business hours. The New Canaan Chamber of Commerce has organized a pedestrian mall by closing Elm Street, Main Street, and Forest Street on Saturday for shoppers to browse, buy, and learn about local organizations. The Village Fair and Sidewalk Sale will take place Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and will include over 120 vendors and organizations, including 27 newcomers alongside many of New Canaan's favorite nonprofit groups. You can get more information on that at ncadvertiser.com. And of course, the Darien Chamber of Commerce will hold its annual sidewalk sales and family fun days starting today, July 14th, running Friday and Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. The First County Bank is continuing as the title sponsor of that family outing, and the popular sales event will feature Darien merchants exhibiting alongside the Post Road at the Goodwives and Neroten Heights shopping centers. Many bargains with discounts of up to 70% are expected to be offered, and Wilton will also have its annual summer fair and sidewalk sale this Saturday, July 16th, from 10 to 4 in Wilton Center. The HAN Network will be at those sidewalk sales as part of our Main Street Merchants Tour. We'll be in Darien tomorrow, New Canaan Saturday, and we'll also have a table set up at Wilton, so be sure to come by and say hi. We are going to step out for a break, and when we come back, John Kovac joins me, and we're going to take a look at the front pages of our HAN Network community newspapers this week, coming up after this. I really wanted something that felt like a home. Coming from a big house, I wanted the feel of a home as opposed to a condo. The construction is incredible, whether it's the floors, the fireplace, the moldings, the lighting. It's as peaceful as my home was in the middle of the woods. It feels like a house. It does not feel like a condo or a townhome. I feel like I'm in my house. Walter Stewart's Market in New Canaan is your time-saving local shopping destination for the best of spring. Find many of your favorite products, from great specials on everyday items to the freshest organic produce, artisanal cheeses, and grass-fed steaks. Drop off your knives to be sharpened, grab a beautiful bouquet of spring flowers, and stop in next door for a wine tasting. Plus, their personable staff is always ready to lend a helping hand. So stop in to Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, today, or shop online at stewartsmarket.com. Mosquitoes, ticks, gone. Guaranteed. That's what Mosquito Squad guarantees as America's most trusted mosquito and tick control company. Locally owned and operated, over 90,000 homes have been protected by Mosquito Squad using their dual protection method for season-long protection, which includes barrier spray service for eliminating mosquitoes and adult ticks, as well as supplemental programs to increase tick control. They use only USDA organic options, which are safe and non-toxic. Contact them today at www 
www.squadctny.com or 203-893-4309. Mosquito Squad. No bugs, no bites, no kidding. I'm Denise DiGregoli, the host of The Drive on the HAN Network. Join me Tuesdays for some motivational, intelligent talk with a little humor as we visit with people who live their lives mindfully. Tune in to The Drive live on Tuesdays, 1230, here on the HAN Network. When it comes to local entertainment, we've got it all. From movies, local artists, etiquette, and more. Watch HAN Arts and Leisure every Thursday at 2 on the HAN Network. We are back on this Thursday edition of your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. And since it's Thursday, John Kovach, our editorial director, joins me taking a look at our front pages this week. John? I'm used to being on the other side. I know. I'm sorry. I totally messed you up today. But okay, what are you looking right. at first? I am looking at New Canaan and a very touching story by Rich Durazzo about a family. They are about to observe the one-year anniversary of the loss of their son to a heroin overdose. They're still proud of him, and they felt that... Uh, Prescription drugs play a big role in this story. It, it's a good read. An update on the real estate climate in New Canaan. Great shot by Dave Stewart mm. of Mason Pickering celebrating a home run. <laughs> uh, story that you just brought us on Coffee Break about the Roger Sherman Inn to be replaced by eight houses. Yeah. That, that just amazes me. Beautiful old inn, very historic. And another story you just brought us, the sidewalk sale, yes. starting tomorrow in New Canaan. That's right, and we'll be there on Saturday. Well, I am taking a look at the front page of the Darien Times. We'll be at their sidewalk sales tomorrow, bringing you Coffee Break live from there. But uh, a great photo of uh, a lamb kind of making a little face into the camera. Very cute picture it's there. Little, it's almost a lamb <laughs> selfie there. It is. It looks a little bit like he might have been holding the camera phone out. Anyway, uh, a story we also talked about on Coffee Break this week, Darien to contract Stanford EMS for paramedic services. Uh, sand spread causing potential environmental damage. One resident is concerned there. Uh, so, yeah, a lot going on in How much do you hate speed bumps? A lot. Well, somebody in Reading <laughs> apparently hates them a real lot because they're saying that speed bumps on Umpawag Road were forcefully removed from the road Monday night. They're looking for ways to slow down traffic on that road. It's become a cut through. There, there's a stop sign plan also on the front page. But somebody did, you know, maybe it's a Robin Hood thing, something everybody <laughs> wants to do but might run afoul of the law. But uh, speed bumps removed from Umpqua, Umpawag Road. Yes. I was combining my Fairfields and yes, Reddings there. Yes, there's a lot of uh, Umpawag around. Yes, there are. Billions of blocks, a playful expression of art, interesting feature there. And uh, the town planner saying that Easton has the only place for a school bus depot, that with the buses that Easton and Reading share in their joint school district. All right, well, I'm taking a look at the front page of the Ridgefield Press. Uh, some great camps happening at the Keeler Tavern, uh, offering a glimpse into the town's past. Of course, their colonial history there at Keeler Tavern. Always a lot of fun. And uh, Summer Plan aims to repave 14 roads in Ridgefield. I know people are always interested to find out if their road is one of the ones that's going to be getting paved uh, this year, so you can get a full list there. Don't go back and take the stuff out after they put it in. <laughs> that ready. And uh, Albert Stockley, uh, who is a well-known, renowned chef who works at the Stonehenge Inn, is going to be serving up his last meals there soon. Uh, Stonehenge Inn, just known for... Fine dining, fine cuisine there in Ridgefield. So, interesting feature story there. In Easton, residents spoke out about the need to balance farming and the more modern pursuits necessary to make Easton what it is. A feature by Nancy Doniger on a Easton resident who won a screen test this some time ago, looking back in history to uh, that photo is actually from 1934 an award, a platinum album, to Stephen Tramposh of Easton and Grace Stancic retiring after 28 years as town hall. She was the controller for the town of Easton. 
All right, taking a look at the front page of the Weston Forum. The state near the top in per pupil spending when it comes to education. Weston also ranking high in its DRG. Uh, so always some good to kind of break down those numbers and get a look at that. Uh, Phillips and McGill win Weston's EMS award. Congratulations to them. And there's gonna be a new school resource officer. So a nice uh, interview with him by Gregory Menti. Will and Bulletin sharing that look at state per pupil spending. A resident will be joining SWIM across the Sound that coming up the end of the month to raise money for St. Vincent's Cancer Care. There's a feature about a homegrown art show at the Wilton Library, and I read this story, very interesting uh, story by Jeanette Ross there, as one of the artists in there is recovering from a stroke. That's his work, uh, the lower picture to the left-hand side of the page, and it's him getting his dexterity back an interesting part of that story love the local art shows and see yeah. how creative your neighbors are and a story about the fire department secretary who's uh, going from the bravest to the finest mm. as she's moving to the police department all right well looking at the milford mirror uh controversial seaside avenue housing approved that's been a big issue there and in fact one resident called out during that planning and zoning meeting you should be ashamed uh when they made that approval you can get a lot more on that in uh, this week's milford mirror and as we talked about earlier this week milford's first poet laureate has been named uh mick thebes so pretty cool Monroe, and, and keep this in mind if you do use Lake Zor, that uh, chemical treatment yesterday of, with herbicides and chemicals to keep down some species. So there are some cautions about bathing and using the water. That's uh, on the front page of the Monroe Courier. Interesting story that the State uh, Department of Health Lab, if your pet now comes in contact with an animal mm. that could be rabid, it's now on you to pay for the testing, not the state. Right. If I uh, visit by the Pyramid Shrine Temple Clowns to Hewitt Health and Rehabilitation in Shelton and the cast of Matilda on Broadway visiting a theater company, that all in Monroe. All right, very cool. We'll take a look at the front page of the Shelton Herald. Uh, an interesting story, an interview uh, with one of the farmers at Jones Farms about maintaining healthy crops during a drought. Really nice story, and Shelton has such a long farming history, so it's always great to get those stories in there. Uh, and also, Aaron Berkowitz spoke to the Shelton police chief about bridging the gap between police and civilians in the wake of all the violence recently, and he did a great job there. I know we also have some video from that yes. interview. And uh, legislators visited Wiffle Ball, Inc., where, if you don't know, of course, Shelton is home to the Wiffle Ball. And it's a longtime family business. You know, they don't do a lot of promotion. They don't need to. Well, so it's cool to? to try to get a look in there and, and find out what's going on. I so. mean, I, re I remember getting those when I was a kid. Yeah. Stratford has a new police chief, and the Stratford Star was there when Joe McNeil was sworn in. And you just had agriculture in Shelton. Agriculture in Stratford, too, where the Police Athletic League has opened a community garden. Sterling House has received a state grant, $1.2 million, for an elevator and renovations. And a vigil being held tonight at 8 p.m. on the steps of the First Baptist Church. That's 1301 Stratford Ave. And that's with all the violence that has gone on across the country of late. And taking a look at the Trumbull Times, finally, something we've talked about on a couple of our shows, but Kevin Sutherland, who was murdered last year on the D.C. Metro, his photos uh, are being displayed now in the metro stations there, and they're just really beautiful photos of D.C. Uh, and, you know, so Steve did a nice story talking to the family and friends of Kevin, Kevin Sutherland. Also, uh, Foundation Cracks, Community Center Architect to Answer Council and Public Concerns. Again, the controversy around Trumbull's Community Center continues. That's been a big story there. Uh, but the Trumbull Center Fire District shines and saves thanks to affordable energy upgrades. So a nice little story on that. And in Arts and Leisure, we have the yes. Tango. And sand sculptures and in Milford. And sand sculptures. Not at the same time. Yes. Cool as that would be to watch. <laughs> cool as a cucumber as that would be to watch. Yes. That's a tease. That is a tease. We also have some uh, great cucumber recipes, and I do love those, especially cucumber cocktails this time of year. I don't know if you've ever had one. They're delicious. I have not. All right. Well, John, I know we have Yankee Fisherman coming up at 1 o'clock. We are going to begin an in-depth look at surf casting, what you need to get started, how to stay safe. We'll start that today. 
We'll talk about conservationists joining an organization that's really traditionally been known as anglers. What's on Arts and Leisure? Well, The Real Dad is back, and so they'll have a lot of great movie chat coming up today. Looking forward to that. HA and Arts and Leisure is at 2 o'clock. We're going to wrap things up here. John, thanks for joining me. Anytime. I'll see you next Thursday. That's right. And tomorrow, we will be live in Darien for your coffee break at 11, so be sure to check that out. Then we're going to have a lot of great interviews with merchants this weekend coming up. Of course, starting today, we have our Babe Ruth 13U baseball coverage. Yes. So be sure to check that out. We're going to keep an eye on the weather, but that's all going to go to plan. You can find out more at hn.network. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. And of course, we'll see you tomorrow in Darien.